Italy and Scotland, folks. Six Nations. Apologies, this one's a little bit late. Uh, this game was on at 1.30 in the morning NZ time, so um, I've watched this one delayed. But, um, yeah, pretty good game. Sadly, I did know the result, so it took a little bit of the edge off, especially seeing as uh, there was a genuine period towards the end where it could have gone either way. But, um, yeah, ultimately Scotland end up getting themselves a bonus point win. And it's another one where the Italians, I think, will be kind of cursing their lack of execution. But, um, yeah, you guys can let us know your thoughts. Uh, good crowd at Murrayfield. Obviously, the early kickoff meant um, pretty nice uh, pretty nice weather up there in Scotland, you know. Um, afternoon game, early afternoon. And um, people seemed pretty pumped. Uh, especially when uh, the Scottish guys were able to, I don't know, get some key line breaks and whatnot. You could really feel the crowd kind of coming alive. Uh, every time such things would happen, which is, you know, just pleasing to see, man. The atmosphere across the Six Nations has generally been very good. Uh, for Skinny, though, with the first great kind of breakdown penalty won early, uh, meant the Italians had a chance to take the lead, although they missed the shot at goal. Allen took that one, and it kind of sailed wide, but they did get it a few minutes later anyway when they got another penalty. Um, the mall had gone close, but they ended up opting for three, so they got three points on the board. Which, if I'm not mistaken, means the three sides that took first points this weekend all ended up losing. But, um, yeah, that's that's just a kind of a weird a weird way that sometimes it goes. Um, on 12 minutes, though, the Scots were not opting for threes. They clearly wanted to come out there and um, go for the jugular. They ended up tapping and going pretty much right out in front, which ended in a great try for Duan van der Merwe. And that one is a proper one to finish. That's one of the tries of the tournament. Just the way that big man can get his feet up in the air and still manage to dot the ball down is just proper, proper incredible. Hugh Jones with the pass to set him up. So great stuff. Scotland going the lead five points to three. Uh, if you get a score a try, that's the way to do it. However, the lead changed again when, um, when there was another breakdown penalty and Tommaso Allen managed to kick that one over. So a bit of tit for tat. That's kind of what you want. Six points to five. Um, Scotland did have a decent period of pressure, but no points, although eventually the ref was getting uh, frustrated with the Italians at scrum time, and he gave them a warning for collapsing, and eventually ended up with Riccioni uh, getting the yellow card. Now, one thing I will say is, uh, I don't know, it felt like he was not hesitating. Angus Garner didn't really hesitate to show the yellow card there. But when you look at the penalty count overall, Scotland conceded five more penalties than the Italians and didn't concede any yellow cards. So I don't usually like to go on to the refs that much, but I felt like that one yeah, maybe didn't even up. I think the Scots got a couple of warnings, which maybe across the course of the game was a wee bit fortunate, but certainly not the reasons that the Italians lost, I don't think. Um, but anyway, with the man in the bin, Blair Kinghorn gets the first of his three tries. He's just got such a wee shimmy, doesn't he? All from the scrum, and um, yeah, that's kind of a little shimmy finish. He's a great finisher, is Blair Kinghorn. I'm still not sold on him as a 10. I don't know what it is, but he's a great finisher. So um, yeah, 12 points to 6. Scotland are in the lead. But I mean, Italy, with 14 men, were actually pretty decent. They went through 10 plus phases in Scotland's half. They ended up, uh, it was a cough in the ball up, giving away a penalty. And the next time they went in Scotland's half, they went like 11 phases before Xander Ferguson won a turnover. So... Um, yeah, they were playing some decent rugby, despite being a man down. So 12-6 at halftime, but Scotland's had 59% possession and 63% territory. So first half, uh, Scotland take a pretty decent lead into the sheds. Second half, somehow the Italians are holding out for, for quite some time under a Scottish on onslaught. There's at least two times where it looks like Scottish ball carrier has carried over the Italian line just to be driven backwards. But again... Who do you need to finish off a try at last? Uh, Blair Kinghorn, he manages to go over. So 19 points to 6. The lead is starting to look pretty comfortable. Um, and the Italians just continue to blow opportunities. They've got a 5 meter line out in Scotland's 22. Uh, they lose the line out. They've got um, a good attacking play inside Scotland's half. They just cough up the ball. Like It's just, it's kind of frustrating. Although the Scottish defence, I think man for man, was was looking pretty comfortable. They were very rarely, you know, looking that troubled. They were quite capable of just keeping the Italian attack quiet, which is, uh, we looked at the defenders beaten stat in the preview, I think, and like Italy was second only to, I think, was it France for defenders beaten? Like Italy's got some proper good attack, even without Capuzzo at fullback. So 
Um, they eventually did get it done. Tommaso Allen gets their only try of the game on 62 minutes. That one was when they went blindside. Alessandro Garbisi to Paolo Garbisi. Little dink through for Tommaso Allen. They missed the conversion, which would have brought it within uh, a score. But it's 19-11. And they get it within a score from a penalty a few minutes later. So 19-14, man, that's game on. Properly game on. And Italy, for a good 10, 15 minute period, have been the better of the two sides. Um, 68 minutes, though, it looks like the momentum is going to be flicked around because they're still under the pump, the Scots. But Ali Price intercepts an Italian pass. He gets down the other end. So a little bit of Scottish momentum. You can feel the crowd get back into the game. Although um, the Italians won a penalty at the breakdown. Italy were chasing the game. Pierre Bruno had a big run down the right wing. Italy attack from a line out in the Scottish 22. Scotland went offside. That's when I write no yellow card because it's starting to add up. The Italians tap and go. They get advantage again. Still nothing doing in terms of that card. Um, eventually, Stain managed to stop Alessandro Garbisi going over from what looked like a surefire try as well. Um, and then eventually on 78 minutes, right on the goal line, Lamaro knocks the ball on in the tackle. He seemed pretty frustrated. He thought one of the Scottish guys was offside, but... Um, I don't know, players will complain to the ref all day long. But anyway, uh, knocked it on. And then just to add a bit of salt in the wound, wouldn't you know it, Scotland, uh, from the resulting scrum, they're able to go length of the field. Duan van der down the left wing. Sets up that man Kinghorn for an 81st minute hat-trick try. So 26-14. The game finishes looking a little more comfortable than it actually was. Like, I had seen the final scoreline, but obviously didn't know that it was 1914 for as long as it was. So that added at least a little bit of spice, although I knew Scotland and this one were going to get away with it, having already seen the score. But yeah, pretty crazy game. I still think this Italian side is going to get better. A lot of young guys, I think the decision-making will be a bit better, but also you got to give credit to Scotland's defence. I mean, even if they got a card, I still think they would have hung on because their tackling was just phenomenal. Really, really phenomenal. I mean, possession finishes 53-47, and so does the territory. But second half, Italy edged both. 52% possession and 57% territory, which was a flip on its head from that first half. So Italy was certainly uh, in the game, man. But I mean, clean breaks 5-3 to Scotland. Defenders beaten 34-9 to Scotland. That highlights the strength of the Scottish defence as well. They tackled at 95%, which is about as high as it ever gets. That's what I'm talking about, about it just being phenomenal. Like Italy's 85% is still solid. But it's kind of normal. That extra 10% from the Scots is pretty amazing. And then turnovers conceded 15-9 by the Italians. So too much coughed up ball and just couldn't break down that Scottish defence. Run meters finished 556 to 406 in favour of Scotland. Duan van der Merwe is a big part of that. He has eight defenders beaten, two clean breaks, 86 metres, a try and a try assist. Kinghorn obviously gets his hat trick. Dempsey, man of the match, 23 from 23 tackles, six defenders beaten. 52 metres, but also three penalties considered. The penalty count was 15-10. That's why I'm a little bit... 15-10, and the side with 10 penalties considered gets the yellow card to 15. I don't mean to labour the point, but you get what I mean. Uh, Pierre Bruno continues to be an enigma. 63 metres, but also six from 12 tackles. Defensively, he can be a bit of a liability. Rutzer, though, uh, 21 from 21 tackles for him. But there you go, folks. Um, best of the rest is the way they describe the Scots in the post-match on my commentary feed here. Uh, basically saying that Scotland are uh, a pretty bloody good team, but not quite at the level of the, uh, of the Italian, not Italians, the, uh, the French and the Irish at the moment. But yeah, overall, I think there's a fair bit of positive to take from, uh, from that Scottish campaign, especially just imagine if they'd got that result in France. I know you can wonder, but, um. Yeah, for the Italians, as I said, improving. So, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game. Uh, again, apologies for the delay in getting this one up. But, um, yeah, you guys take care. Talk to you guys soon.